What's up, sons? It's Blind Run with Sound Attack once again, and today I have a review of the Zotac Mini PC. This one in particular is the CI, or from the C series, and is the CI329. So we're going to talk more about it right after this. Okay, so first things first, let's get the specifications out of the way. It is rocking an Intel N4100 processor, which is quad core processor clocked at 1.1 gigahertz, and it goes up to 2.4 gigahertz with turbo boost. It has two slots. Keep in mind, this is a bare bones PC uh, for DDR4 clocked it up to 2400 megahertz and goes up to supporting eight gigabytes of it. It has the integrated Intel UHD graphics 6 600, so not 620 or 630. It is the lower end there. However, all of the display ports are there for pretty much some of the newest. The HDMI is only up to 2.0a, so you're talking about 4K at 60 hertz. The display port is a 1.2 port, so once again, it's a little bit above 4K here. It's the 4096 by 2160 at 60 hertz, but it's not display port 1.4 or anything. The VGA is just going to support up to 1080p at 60 hertz, and that is all of the input or output for video options, but that's pretty good for the size or considering the size. Now, it does have a slot for a 2.5 inch SATA drive up to 6 gigabits per second. That can be either an SSD or an HDD, so a regular hard drive. You do have the option or on the front, which is awesome, of using an SD card, you can get a converter to go all the way down to micro, and it functions really, really well. One of my favorite parts about it. It has a microphone in as well on the front. It has three USB 3.0s, one on the front and two on the rear. A single USB 3.0 Type-C, which is amazing, and a single USB 2.0, which is still Type-A. Now, one of the best features about this in particular is that it does have dual NICs. So if you're looking for something to run like possibly a PF Sense router or OpenSense router on, this is something you could do that with potentially. However, it is important to note that the only operating system that it officially supports is going to be Windows, but I have seen a lot of people already using OpenSense on it. It appears to work pretty well. Now, because it is basically slated as a, an HTPC, meaning home theater PC, you are looking at having AC wireless on it, which is amazing. It also supports Bluetooth 5.0, so you're gonna be able to hook up all of your Bluetooth devices to it if you decide that you wanted to use it as a home theater PC. It also does come with the VESA mount right out of the box, so you can hook it up and just place it on the rear of your TV if that's what you're planning on doing with it. And I was pretty glad or happy to see that they actually have that included in the box. The power supply is actually just a 19 volt 40 watt power supply. And during load, really, it doesn't even get anywhere close to that. You're talking about between seven and 12 watts most of the time, which is just crazy. Super, super low power consumption. And it needs to be because it's all passively cooled, which means, yes, it's a completely silent experience unless you have a regular hard drive in there. But as cheap as solid state drives are these days, I'd say just grab a solid state drive and go for it. That being said, the particular model that I picked up didn't come with anything. It was bare bones, like I stated earlier. So I opted to throw a 120 gigabyte SSD in there from SanDisk for about $24. And then I put a stick of four gigabytes of 2400 megahertz memory in there as well. It's important to note that I did try a couple of other sticks and it was interesting because I could get into the BIOS, it would read the sticks, but when I would try to actually boot to the operating system, it wouldn't post. It would just sit there with the 99 error code in the bottom right. And in a last ditch effort to get it working, I had some unmarked memory from another board that I got earlier in the year that they sent with it. It was a stick of 2400 megahertz unmarked. I threw that in, it worked right away. I'm going to link, of course, the memory compatibility list, which is gonna be pretty important for this particular device, you're going to want to make sure that you pick up something that's already been tested. Otherwise, you could go through some very 
painstaking troubleshooting like I did and that just wasn't fun at all. That's probably the biggest downside. Other than that, let's go on to the benchmarks. Taking a look at it, I just wanted to see how the CPU performed. Keeping uh, in mind that we actually have a special driver from Intel for this particular setup that is a low power consumption power profile for Windows, which keeps it really, really, really low power. Uh, hence why you have the passive cooling and why you need that. Unfortunately, I didn't see that same driver translated over for something like Ubuntu or something. So you're gonna wanna probably monitor temps a little bit closer if you're running something like Linux, just out of curiosity, if you're you know having any sort of performance issues over there. It's also important to note that that particular driver you can't actually get from a Windows 10 update, so you're gonna have to go actually to the Zotac website or to the Intel website and grab that driver for the N4100. Now all of that aside, back to the benchmarks. Taking a look at Cinebench, the single threaded score was 62, not too shabby for 2.4 gigahertz. And the multi-threaded score was about 193, which still falls short of, of course, something like the uh, third generation i5, which is a little disappointing, but it is what it is. I kind of expected it, right? It's not disappointing when you consider the super low power consumption and no noise aspect to it. Now the CPU Z single threaded score was a 189, while the multi-threaded was 746. The old Core 2 Duos are still beating it in the single thread, most likely due to, of course, that gigahertz limitation and or the clock limitation, essentially. However, it does come out ahead in the multi-threaded still above those, which is pretty cool. You're talking about something that, that had, we've advanced technology so far these days, it, it's just incredible what you can get out of such a low power device and such a silent device. Now in my experience, I went ahead and did try to load up some games. There was nothing that ran really, pretty much nothing ran, uh, just to be completely honest with you guys that I felt like was worth really talking about from a gaming perspective. I don't think this is what that device is trying to do. So it's probably best that we don't even actually approach that. There are games like Fortnite that could potentially run. However, uh, Fortnite, for example, does have a limitation on a, a minimum spec on their processor. And if it reads the processor and it doesn't see it as supporting it, then you can't even get the launcher open. So launcher for Fortnite didn't even work. So we're really looking at a device that's purely meant as a home theater PC and is purely meant to basically do that. That being said, there are other things you can do with it that I find super intriguing. One specifically is going to be an OpenSense router, which I definitely want to give a try out with because it does have those dual NICs, so you can specify one for your WAN and one for your LAN. Push that out to you know, either your router that you already have in place or push it out to a switch and even have it run DHCP. Not that I really recommend doing that in OpenSense, but it's a possibility. And I think that's probably because of the price point and the fact that it does have those dual NICs, that's probably what I would lean towards, especially just as a home like hobbyist OpenSense router. The other thing that I would use it for is just daily web browsing and so on. It is really, really snappy, especially with the solid state drive in there. I didn't have any issues with 1080p. However, when I did try to bump up to 4K, YouTube videos would just get really, really sluggish and the OS would be kind of slow. So even though it can output 4K, I'm definitely not going to say that you should run anything in 4K. It's definitely a 1080p device, but it is a, a snappy 1080p device. Some of your other workloads like Word, Excel, PowerPoints all work perfectly fine as long as of course you're not working with super large Excel files or spreadsheets and then you're gonna have some issues there based on how much memory you put into it. So it's, you're gonna get out of it what you put into it money-wise there. All in all, with the hard drive, the memory, and the device itself, I'm in for under $200, and I think that that uh, is a pretty good price there, especially considering the dual NICs and the AC Wi-Fi. Uh, I, I don't think I could really find anything else 
I definitely couldn't really build myself something like that with all of those features, especially at that small form factor, especially silent. So putting all those things together, it comes out on top as a pretty awesome device. Some of the things I would like to see, uh, or some of my complaints is, the, the number one complaint that I have with it is going to be that it only officially supports Windows. Now that wouldn't be a huge issue until you take a look at the way you flash the BIOS. And to flash the BIOS, you actually have to do it from within the operating system and Zotac only provides a tool for Windows operating systems. So if you're planning on doing something else with this device or another operating system, you're still gonna need at least a Windows to go boot drive to boot up into to flash the BIOS for any BIOS updates, which are coming quite quickly these days with all the Spectre meltdown issues and so on and so forth. So that is a noteworthy downside in my opinion. However, it is officially not supported to do anything but Windows. So advertising, they're still being very, very friendly. I think they, they aren't hiding anything there. So props to uh, Zotac for that. We're gonna take a look at some other things we can do with it later on. So if you're interested in that, be sure to hit the like, comment down below. Let me know what you guys would like to see me do with this particular device. And I will see you next Tuesday.